Mike Rich from the Oregonian. For both you guys, uh, what does it mean to pull out a game the way you did in advance? Uh, it was, <coughs> you know, I was really proud of, of what our team did tonight. Uh, obviously, they were undermanned, but they came out and competed. Uh, you know, we talked about what they did in the regular season when they didn't have guys uh, going to Utah and winning, uh, competing with OKC. And we, we knew that they could come in here and, and win this game just like we did game five. So I was really happy with the way we executed down the stretch. Uh, we didn't panic when they, they put up a, a fight for us. Um, we did, did the things necessary to win the game. You need me to follow up? Uh, obviously, a, a quick turnaround for you guys, but just thoughts about going up against the Warriors, the, the problems that they pose, and um, some of those matchups that you guys are going to have to get into. For both of you, please, CJ. I think they, pro they pose a lot of problems. Um, historically speaking, they had a really good year, um, breaking the record for most wins. Um, losing one game at home, I believe, this year, so you know it's going to be a tough environment. Offensively, even without Steph, they do a great job of moving the ball. Um, Draymond. Is, is the head of the snake now that, st that steps out and he moves the ball well. He's the heart and soul of the team. I think he gets everybody involved and, you know, Clay will be a little bit more aggressive looking to score without Steph and uh, Harrison Barnes and Sean Livingston. The rest of the guys will, will be a lot more aggressive too. Yeah, I mean, yeah, same thing. We we thought this team was tough, you know, without without CP and Blake, but that's, that's a championship team. And uh, even without Steph, they're still a championship team. So uh, we got to keep our mind right. Uh, come out and compete and play together. Um, and you know we can't we can't be worried about who's not out there because uh, we just watched them you know beat Houston by 25 twice without Steph. So uh, we just got to keep improving on the things we've done well and uh, be locked in for that series. Dan Usman from USA Today for both of you. You guys had a season high scoring output against Golden State and you gave up your most points in a single game against the same team. What do you remember about those two games? Um, just that we were able to score, uh, but you know, to beat them we had to basically outscore them. And uh, against a team like that, when you don't get stops and you let them get rolling, um, you know, if we weren't making shots the way we were, we probably would have lost by 30. So uh, we can't let them be that comfortable, as comfortable as they were that night. Um, you know, they're going to make shots. We can't be discouraged by that. But uh, every possession matters when you're playing against a team like that because, you know, they always won three away from running off on you. So uh, we just got to be ready for that. Yeah, I think they do a great job of, of scoring in bunches, and they did that. You know, every game we played, they went on a run, whether that was the third quarter, second quarter, or to start the fourth quarters where they go on a, you know, 12-2 run, 14-4 run, or, you know, Clay hits three or four threes in a row, or Steph gets going. So you got to kind of limit their runs and their opportunities that way, and uh, that, that's how you keep the game within reach. Dame, Jason Quick, Comcast Sports Net. Uh, at the end of the game, you kind of talked to the team around half court there. What was your message? And then also, after this series victory, does any part of the season kind of come flooding back to you as a as a memory? Uh, in the huddle, I just uh, I told our guys that we we got that done by fighting and, and being together and um, pretty much just not worrying about the outside noise, whether that's positive or negative. Um, and in this series coming up, we got a chance. You know, everybody will say that we don't, but uh, you know, I just wanted to remind everybody that we got a chance, and we're gonna go out there and we're gonna compete. And we're gonna put our best foot forward. Um, as far as this series, I think. Um, you know, it was funny that we ended up making the playoffs, first of all, and then when we got our matchup, it was like, yeah, there'll be a first-round exit at best. And then, you know, two guys go down, which was really unfortunate. Um, and, you know, you hate to see that happen, <clears throat> but then it was like they're the favorite, you know what I mean? And in our minds, we were still the underdog. So I was, I was really happy with, you know, the way our team was able to, like I said, ignore – uh, the outside noise once again, even when it was in our favor, and, and I still get it done. Damian, uh, Eric Anderson, Vancouver Columbia, and two years ago, obviously, you hit that shot, but you have a defensive stop against Jamal Crawford on that last possession. People knock you all the time for your defense. Yeah. How do you feel about that play, and what did it mean for you? I mean, it, it was team defense. You know, it wasn't just me just doing it all for, for that possession. Um, you know, on our scouting report, we didn't want to let him keep getting to his right hand, and 
uh, tonight we struggled with that, and he made us pay for it. You know, I think he had like 35 or something. Um, but it came down to one possession. Um, you know, he called my man up the screen, and we switched it, and I ended up being the guy guarding him. And I didn't want to let him raise up and shoot a comfortable three, and I didn't want to let him get to his right hand. So uh, once I sat on the right hand, he drove left, and, you know, I basically counted on, on the help. Uh, you know, I rolled him. I was obviously there, but, um, you know, I, I was physical, and Mace came over and contested the shot and made it uncomfortable for him. Uh, then somebody else boxed his man out, and then Mace comes up with the rebound and, and knocks down two huge free throws. So um, it was just a, a good possession of team defense. For both you guys, uh, for the guys who aren't up on the podium now, how much does it bolster your confidence in just your teammates to see them have big games? You know, Mason had a big night, Rook had a big night, Mo, Mo too. How much does it help to see them play well in this round? Um, you know, I think it should really help everybody's confidence. Um, just because it was, you know, I didn't shoot great over the course of this series. Um, you know, CJ didn't shoot great, and you know, a lot of times when People think we have our best chance when me and CJ go out there and explode offensively. And, um, you know, we had a lot of times where we, we counted on other guys and other guys answered the call and they stepped up. Um, so, you know, I think they should, they should feel good about that and uh, they should understand that that's what we need from them. And we had our best when we can, you know, trust each other and continue to count on each other. And it, it, it happened again tonight. You know, Mace hit three free throws to close out the game. You know, guys getting offensive rebounds, tipping balls. Um, so that's that's what we we got to continue to to have. Um, was there a moment? And this is for each of you. Was there a moment individually during the season when you realized that this was in fact a playoff team? I think it started in uh, where we go, San Diego. When we were in San Diego, we kind of met, got together, and kind of got a feel for everybody's character, everybody's work ethic, and you know, what, what everybody wanted to get out of this season. And I think, you know, looking at, you know, Chief, looking at Ed Davis, looking at G, and a lot of a lot of different guys getting opportunities they didn't have in the past, Myers Leonard, you know, Alan Crabb. And you could kind of see the hunger in them. You could see that they were excited about this season, and our coaching staff, you know, behind closed doors, we, we felt like we could make the playoffs, you know, in September. We felt like we had enough pieces to, to get there, but it was going to be a process and that we needed to get everybody together. We need to execute. We're going to take some lumps. So when we got, when we were 11 and 20, we were looking like, all right, you know, we're going to turn the corner at some point, and it's going to come from the defensive end. I think that's what we showed in these playoffs. And we got a lot of stops when Dame and I were making shots. Other guys stepped up. Chief had a 30-point game. Mo Harkless hit some big shots throughout this series. Alan Crabb stepped up, and it showed different different players, you know, stepping up at different times allowed us to be successful. I mean, you mentioned the three free throws that Plumlee hit. When he started the season, he could hardly hit a free throw, and he'd missed two earlier yeah. ones. Talk about coming through in the clutch. Uh, that was that was huge. Uh, I think any, anybody in that situation, you got to be you got to be really strong mentally. Uh, you got to be really confident because the best shooters get up there and miss and miss those free throws at that in that time. But um, you know, he every day when I come to the practice facility. And when I'm coming out on the court, I see Mace on the far basket um, shooting free throws. And he got his, his jersey hanging out of the back of his shorts. And he's just shooting free throws all the way until the clock run out. You know, you see him over there shooting those free throws. And, you know, some days they'll be rattling out, and some days he'll be making them all net, you know, for a long time. Uh, but, you know, it was just funny that um, seeing him do that every day for a, for a whole season. And us closing this game out comes down to that. And, you know, he makes three out of four. And, um, you know, when he was at the line, I was like, he just missed two. He going he to knock these free throws down. And, you know, he came through big for us. CJ, in this series, do you think your relationship with Dame, both on and off the court, has changed or <laughs> developed? <laughs> no, man. I think even when I was getting DMPs, we were still close. You know, we still do the same stuff together. But, but just being through uh, the, the rigors of such a tough series like this, does that help you guys grow in any way? Yeah, I definitely think the experience, you know, playing in the playoffs, playing down the stretch, being able to lean on each other um, offensively and defensively, you know, figuring out what sets to run for each other. And Dane made some great passes tonight in the lane. Uh, he, he, drew, he drew the defense and it made my job easy, you know, catch and shoot wide open threes. A lot of, a lot of guys will hit those shots, and, and that's the type of player he is. He, he gets a lot of attention, you know, on a nightly basis, and, and I'm, I'm the, benef the beneficiary a lot of nights. And 
and that's that's kind of how our relationship goes. And when I can make his job easier, I try to do that. And by scoring or getting or getting him in a set where he can get a shot, and I think our teams have to respect both of us as individuals. And, and a lot of times we get one on ones with no help. CJ or Damon, you're facing a team that's ridiculous from three all the time. You guys. <laughs> Particularly tonight in the third and fourth quarters were outstanding from three as well. I mean, it's, it's, it helped you s sort of defray what Rivers and, and Crawford were doing. How much do you all talk about three-pointers? How much do you work on your long-distance shooting? How much does Coach Stotts talk about that with you guys, the importance of it? Um, I think the, the, the big thing tonight was the, the quality of the threes that we got. And, you know, that goes back to us trusting each other and sharing the ball, moving the ball. You know, a lot of those came off penetrating pitch or, you know, they trapped the pick and roll. We hit the guy in the middle and he makes the play, you know, and the guy wide open on the weak side. So um, it, I think it comes down to the, the quality of the shots that we got um, and just and trusting each other. And we also have a, a drill that we, that we do um, amongst our team called 100 threes. And, you know, nobody want to be at the bottom of that list. So, you know, you got guys who you guys might not think is a great shooter hitting, you know, 65, 70 threes out of 100. And, you know, they've grown to be comfortable with those shots. So, um, you know, it takes a lot of – you put a lot of time into being able to uh, make those shots.